Thank you very much for uh, your invitation to participate in this course. Now, I start with an obvious statement, but I don't want to waste time on this, that mitral repair is superior to replacement for a number of reasons that uh, you can read it here. So it's very important then to ask ourselves all the time, is the valve repairable? And um, of course, uh, this is uh, depending on the experience that everybody can have, is depending on the volume of the hospital and um, according to the volume, you can have a different prevalence of mitral valve repair and of course you can have a different uh, results uh, in terms of uh, mortality. This is a debate uh, whether mitral valve repair is uh, art or science. I don't want to waste time on this. You can see here a very nice uh, painting is The Wedding of the Virgin by Raffaello Sanzio. Certainly there's a lot of art in there, but there's also a lot of technique, a lot of uh, science. Uh, in my opinion, you can learn everything. Certainly there are situations, as uh, Frank said before, where you have to use your brain, your judgment, but uh, certainly uh, you can learn uh, many things. And then I think that uh, mitral valve repair is certainly reproducible. It's a question of having exposure, enough exposure to that. In our institution, we had uh, the distribution of etiology in patients of mitral valve repair is, uh, in this slide, uh, the 60% of the patient submitted to repair had a degenerative disease. Uh, about one-fifth of the patient had ischemic or dilated cardiomyopathy, and the minority of patients had uh, endocarditis or rheumatic. I'm going to concentrate on uh, degenerative uh, mitral valve uh, disease. And uh, an important principle of this surgery is that the purpose should be to neutralize the disease. Um, uh, that means to offer a survival and a quality of life which is similar to the match uh, population. So you can say that the disease is uh, neutralized when after the operation you have a normal ventricular natural function when there's no rhythm disturbances and there's a perf long-term valve function. So this is theoretically what you should achieve uh, in your uh, mitral valve uh, surgery. And certainly if repair is carried out before left ventricular dysfunction, before atrial fibrillation or uh, enlargement, excessive enlargement of the left atrium, normal life expectancy observed is observed at any age. And you can see here in this slide that um, everybody can have uh, neutralization of the disease because uh, beside the survival also quality of life is very important and uh, you can have a, a normal quality of life if the repair is uh, carried out at the proper time in a perfect way. <clears throat> Indication for surgery in asymptomatic severe mi uh, primary mitral regurgitation have been already presented by Alec before and this is an important point. You know, if you want to have really neutralization of the disease, you have to be rather aggressive in your um, operation, in the time of the operation. Uh, if you have a girl like this, you see, a beautiful girl like this, uh, certainly, if you make a, a midline sternotomy, you cannot say that you neutralize the disease. So it's a, it's a very important aspect of mitral valve surgery, particularly in young women or in young people in general. You have to use other uh, alternatives technique because uh, it, this is part of the neutralization process. And of course, a mini toracotomy can be carried out nowadays with similar results and robotic uh, uh, assisted uh, mitral surgery is also an alternative. Uh, I think personally that this, we started robotic surgery in 1999, but then we abandoned it because it's really too expensive. Now, there's a revival around the uh, United States for sure, but also around Europe now is starting again with robotic surgery, but certainly the price and the cost of this type of procedure is extremely high. Of course, results can be very good and superimposable to normal uh, surgery. Here, I can uh, show you some data, some literature telling you that uh, mortality for minimally invasive surgery is very similar to conventional surgery. And also in this uh, paper, uh, presenting a propensity analysis, uh, there is no difference in morbidity and, uh, 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 with minimally invasive surgery and conventional surgery. 
Let's come now to the techniques and uh, assess a few principles uh, for um, uh, techniques. Uh, these are the two major types of degenerative disease that we can have, the Barlow's disease on the left side. You can see the redundancy of the tissues, is an abundant uh, tissue, redundancy of the cord, and on the other side, on the right side, there is uh, fibroelastic deficiency and um, the elastin degeneration, there's no billing, no excess of tissue. So we have really to use different type of techniques and to adapt our techniques to the um, redundancy of the tissues. Posterior leaflet prolapse, let's call mural, um, uh, mural leaflet uh, prolapse. I think it's a, it's a good idea, the one proposed by Frank before. We have here a number of uh, of uh, possible solutions that uh, we have to choose individually for the individual patient. We have to give the best uh, treatment. Certainly the posterior leaflet prolapse has been considered tradition to be an easy, an easy operation for mitral valve surgeon, but uh, in my opinion is not true. It was uh, very well pointed out before by Frank. Uh, so certainly the mitral valve, the, uh, the mural leaflet can really present with uh, a lot of changes with the, also the, the central lobe uh, can, be, uh, can be divided also and uh, you can have uh, deep uh, clefts uh, really interfering with a, with a normal and a classical repair. So I think um, you have to use uh, a lot of judgment also in the posterior uh, leaflet uh, prolapse. Quadrangular resection, you can see here very often is, uh, uh, particularly in Barlow's disease, is associated with sliding plastic to prevent uh, uh, some. You can use artificial cord in the posterior leaflet and uh, with a very good results. Uh, and this is particularly useful in patients who have uh, uh, fibroelastic deficiency, where uh, I'm a little re reluctant to um, resect uh, uh, valve tissue in uh, fibroelastic deficiency. And uh, probably this is a, is a good solution. In this situation, is a good solution also when you have a calcium and a calcification in the annulus. Uh, the haircut technique is another choice which has been used in a robotic surgery but uh, been used by many people also in a conventional uh, surgery. Uh, this is a, a very useful technique which uh, I've been uh, using since uh, a few years, uh, particularly in the situation when you have a very redundant, very big, very large P2 or M2 portion of the valve and uh, M1 and M3 are more or less uh, uh, normal. Uh, in these particular uh, circumstances, uh, this type of repair, the so-called butterfly resection, can be extremely, extremely useful. The anterior bileaflet disease can be treated in many ways. I don't go into the details, of course. Everybody can uh, do whatever they like or they feel more confident. Uh, uh, with uh, the triangular resection is not something that has to be completely abandoned, you know. If you have a, a very limited uh, type of prolapse in the anterior leaflet that you can use uh, triangular resection very successfully. The edge-to-edge -edge repair is also an alternative, of course, is not uh, reproducing a normal, an anatomically normal valve, but who cares? Who cares? We, we find out, found out that uh, uh, for instance, in a VAD, continuous flow is better than pulsatile flow. So what is the problem? You, know, you can also have a double orifice of mitral valve and that can use very well, can be uh, very, very uh, effective. Uh, artificial cord are another uh, important type of um, procedure nowadays. It's probably uh, nowadays the most common operation which is carried out uh, for uh, mitral valve uh, repair. Uh, I want to show you this type of uh, um, device which uh, allows us to uh, insert artificial cord and to regulate uh, the length of the cord under uh, echo guidance at the end of the procedure. And uh, we have used that uh, quite uh, um, successfully in a few patients and uh, I think that uh, is probably 
a type of uh, device which can be useful in uh, regulating the coda, optimizing the length of co-optation. Papillary muscle repositioning, particularly in Barlow's disease, is, is, uh, this operation has been suggested by Gilles Dreyfus and um, uh, can be quite uh, successful. We have, uh, uh, by Dreyfus, uh, uh, long-term results up to 15 years with this type of operation, and results are quite gratifying. The cord transfer is uh, another uh, good operation which has been uh, replacing the sh cord shortening technique, which is, was not successful. Um, as you see here, the transfer is much better than, uh, than the, the shortening of the cord. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, again, the artificial cord are replacing this type of techniques. Another situation we can face is the massive annular dilatation, uh, annular, sorry, annular, annular calcification, as you see here. In the plain chest X-ray, you can notice this uh, calcium, and this is not uncommon in Barlow's disease, even in uh, young people, once in a while you see that, and uh, what we do is the removal of the total uh, calcification, and uh, um, of course this uh, can be done, you have to be very careful, maybe the risk of the operation is a little bit higher, but this is uh, the only way to save the valve in these uh, patients, and the survival after the calcification of the mitral annulus has been reported in many institutions, of course, in, uh, where expert people are doing this operation, uh, results are quite satisfactory. The annuloplasty is another important principle of mitral valve repair. Minor, uh, annuloplasty is routinely performed during mitral valve repair. Uh, the type of annuloplasty, with a flexible or not flexible, complete or so, has, is a little bit debatable still. But um, um, I think that certainly an annuloplasty is uh, adding something to the durability of the repair. And this has been very well shown in many series, including our own. Uh, the risk of sum has to be evaluated after uh, mitral valve repair. You can read here with the condition favoring sum, the mitral aortic angle, uh, narrower than normal 130 degrees, as you can see. Uh, at the right side of this slide. And uh, also, if the ventricle is not, uh, is not uh, big, and this has to be taken in consideration, particularly when we, start, we, when we operate more and more asymptomatic patient, patient with small ventricles. So some can be a real problem in this type of patient that in the past were not operated on. But the current trend is really to uh, do early surgery, and then some can be a, a problem more often. Of course, uh, also the posterior leaflet, uh, more than two centimeter high, can be uh, a, a factor favoring some postoperatively. There are, of course, uh, possibilities to prevent some. Uh, first of all, you have to recognize a potential danger of some preoperatively. You have to remove excessive leaf, uh, leaflet tissue, and of course, use a larger ring is another uh, possibility. Um, if you have some, uh, uh, we found very convenient to use the edge-to-edge -edge technique, and this has been uh, an experience uh, shared by many other groups, including the Cleveland Clinic, and uh, as you see here. Uh, another important principle, uh, which is uh, introduced nowadays in, in uh, mitral valve uh, surgery, is the adjustable, uh, adjustability of the ring, of the prosthetic ring. Uh, there, as you can see here, there are basically three types of rings which are, can be um, used. And uh, we have experience with all these type of rings. Uh, um, recently, um, we have been using this type of ring. Of, uh, um, the, the important thing is that even if you have a, a, a very competent valve, you can uh, optimize the co-optation length. Uh, and uh, you know, in this experience that we had in team 10 patients, a very small experience, the co-optation length was 1.1 uh, uh, centimeter as a mean. So this was uh, really obtained, optimizing the co-optation length uh, after surgery, and this uh, hopefully is providing durability to your uh, repair. So in conclusion um, uh, of this uh, uh, 
a short talk on principle of mitral valve repair. I must say that neutralization of disease is the goal to be pursued. Surgery should be carried out before left ventricular dysfunction and atrial fibrillation. This has been very well pointed out also in the recent uh, guidelines. Appropriate tailored techniques should be used and the individualization of the um, individual area. This is a big advantage of uh, surgery uh, versus percutaneous uh, uh, repairs is the appropriate tailored technique should be used according to the anatomy and to individual uh, uh, lesions of the single patient. And certainly perfectly competent valve with optimal length of cooptation is expected to be uh, durable uh, over time. Thank you.